Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Amy and I create videos on absolutely everything coloured pencil related. Welcome to part number three of this real time leopard eye tutorial. Let's jump straight into and continue our drawing of this study. Right, so we're going to continue straight on with this next patch of fur. So doing exactly the same as we did when we started the last bit and that is just gently running the eraser along just to get rid of the graphite lines so they're just ever so faint and then all we're going to do is put down our base layer of the warm grey one again working in the direction that that fur is going in so nice light shading you want to make sure that you've got a nice sharp pencil as well so if your pencil needs sharpening just give it a little sharpen I need to actually just change mine because it's decided to completely crumble <laughs> in my pencil sharpener which is not the best thing to happen so once you've got your nice sharp pencil all you want to do is just run your pencil back and forth using a shading motion over your area So, nice sharp pencil, as you can see, we're going to go in the direction that the fur is going in, over this section, just filling it in, and to get a nice smooth coverage of the warm grey. It's going to go all the way up to, I need to sort of create a border around this, so I'm not going to go right to the edge, I'm going to go to sort of... half a centimetre before the edge there so just filling all of this in Okay, so I've filled in that area, so we've got all this area now to do. Once I've done that, then I'm going to go over with my buff titanium, because there's actually no sort of cold, grey, coldish areas on this section. So I'm pretty much just going to fill this with the buff titanium. Again, we want to make sure that we avoid those darker areas though. So I'm going to keep this pencil away from those dark spots. Still shading, working in the direction that that fur is going in as well. So this will give the fur on this section a nice creamy appearance.
So just filling in the gaps between these dark spots. I want to fill in all of this bit down here as well. Like that. Okay, so now we're ready to fill in these dark spots. So we're going to do exactly the same as what we did before. Use a nougat pencil to initially lay down the spots and plan them out and then we can go in with a hard pressure with the um, dark sepia pencil. So this we're just doing a general shading, just trying to get a nice shape down. So just mapping everything in, just take your time. So any darker areas towards this end as well, so where you've got some slightly darker sort of orangey tone fur, we want to sort of add those in as we go. It's quite useful to blend these areas out into the rest of the fur as we're doing this stage as well. So if you want to do that you can or you can leave it until you've done the real dark parts and then blend it out. It's up to you how you want to render it as long as you make sure that you do blend everything out of course.
So I'm just adjusting a few areas just where I made a little bit of a mistake there. Just needed to uh, extend that black section a little bit more. Blend that bit out a little bit. So this bit of the fur is actually really quite easy because you've just got this nice golden colour. You don't really have to add very many layers down on top of what we've already got. Just need to add a few sort of fur lines here and there. Just to give the illusion and impression that there's quite a bit of fur and it's nice and fluffy. But the layering process is pretty simple. So if you're watching this before you're actually going in and drawing anything and you're feeling a little bit daunted by this, this is probably a real beginner's tutorial. It's really easy to actually render, it might look daunting because of all the spots and everything, but it's actually really, really easy to render. Not a lot of thought required and of course you've got the line drawing there, so I know a lot of people are actually scared or not scared but worried about perhaps creating an outline and getting it accurate because that is the key to realism really is to get an accurate sketch to make everything look right that's all provided for you so there's really there's no excuse not to have a go at this one Okay, so I've got those spots mapped in. You can see that they're nicely set out, got the shapes correct, and you can sort of already see the definition of the fur and everything. So all I need to do is go over with my dark sepia pencil and introduce some real dark colours to that. And then we just need to blend it out and then just add a little bit of golden tones towards this top corner. So to start with, we'll just add our dark sepia. So you need to make sure it's really nice and sharp, as always. Try not to break your pencil off in my sharpener like I keep seem to be doing. Once you've got a sharp pencil, just go over your nougat areas with your fur in exactly the same way as we did before. So making sure that you blend those bottom fur strokes into the fur by coming down and then going back up and blending back into the fur. Remember to drag a few of these fur strokes into the lighter colour fur as well just so that you can get a nice consistent blend and everything.
So if you feel yourself getting a little bit anxious or a little bit frustrated with your progress because it's going quite slow, take a little break, take a little breather from your work. Come back to it when you're feeling a little bit more inspired maybe or just come back to it after a, a day or an evening. Just take some time away from it and then come back to it and work on it some more. There's no point getting frustrated or anxious or anything over a piece so if it's taking you a while and you're wanting to rush it just make sure you take a little step back try not to rush a piece it's the worst thing that you can do with colored pencils because it really does require a lot of patience not so much concentration because if you know what you're doing and you know what colors you're using i've got them all set out here for you so it should be pretty simple it should be pretty straightforward just take your time with it. Just build your layers ever so slowly and carefully. Taking the extra care at the beginning will prevent you from making mistakes later on and will save you a whole bunch of time. Because if you rush it, you tend to make a lot of mistakes. So if you just take your time, just plan everything out, then you will eliminate those mistakes and then halve your time that you spend drawing. So that's the biggest tip that I could give you for colour pencil work. And of course, just always make sure that you reference your reference photo if you're using one. If you're drawing wildlife or something realistic, I always suggest using a, a reference photo. It really helps with proportions, with the light direction, with the bone structure or whatever you may be drawing, perhaps you're drawing a spoon, it will help with those shiny metal patterns. Having a reference photo really makes all the difference if you're trying to aim for realism. So, with these ones we're going to build up a little bit of a golden colour at the back just on this corner here so for that golden colour what we're going to do is layer down some of the light yellow ochre I'm just going to blend it out as well And then we're going to use the burnt ochre. I'm going to lay down some nougat. Add in some of those fur lines and then we're pretty much done on that little corner. So with your nougat as well, you want to make sure that you add a few lighter fur strokes throughout the fur. Remember you want to make it look quite nice and fluffy. So you're just going to add a few of these strokes throughout the fur here. And then we're going to switch back to our dark sepia and continue with these dark patches. And then do the same throughout, just add in those fur lines.
I think the trickiest part of this portrait is actually trying to make sure that you've blended everything out. It can be quite tricky, but as long as you have the patience and you have the determination to do it, then you will get there in the end. If you feel like you need to practice this technique before you actually go on to your portrait, then feel free to do that. There's no harm in practicing a technique or anything before you actually venture into it. Once you get into the flow of doing this technique as well, it becomes a lot easier. So if you spend, or the longer you spend on it, the easier it will actually become. See, the spots are really starting to come to life now and the whole portrait is starting to really have some sort of effect so it's really starting to look really nice and realistic now so it takes a while to actually come together but when it starts to come together the effect that it has and the impact that you have this time you've spent doing this so how long have we spent so far about two and a half hours so two and a half hours just doing this small section it may seem like a long time, but it really does pay off. If I was to rush this, I could probably get it done in about an hour. Um, but my first strokes would look really jaggedy and rough and they wouldn't look fluffy and soft and I probably couldn't get the same effect running through the eyes or I couldn't get an effect that I actually was happy with but just taking your time and doing things in this manner enables you to get a really really realistic effect and I'm starting to become really pleased with working on this. So the early stages you might have thought that this looked a little bit rough, a little bit like it wasn't going to come together and if you're working on your own drawings and thinking that then just stick with them because more often than not they do actually come together. That's so why it's always important to make sure that you finish whatever you're working on even if you think it's bad because it could all come together and it could start to look terrific. So always try and make sure that you finish your pieces. Even if you don't finish them in the same month or in the same year, come back to it and just throw it away and bin something. So I'm just constantly looking at my reference photo, sharpening my pencil, make sure that I maintain this sharp point. You can see it's really nice and sharp. And just gently adding all of this fur texture and these layers and this dark colour down onto the portrait. Just trying to get all of these spots. So remember to blend with your nougat pencil if you need to, or your white pencil, or any of your lighter colours. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of orange in here as well. So 
So we're going to work back over this lighter area and add in some fur lines. Also, when you're drawing this fur, you want to make sure that you use quite short lines because this fur isn't quite it's quite short, it's not very long. If you were to do long lines, then it would look like it was a long-haired big cat, which of course this leopard isn't, so it would look a little bit funny. So try and make sure that you make small fur lines and try and keep them... Don't try and add them all in the same direction, so don't do this. You want to try and add the hairline so that they do this. So they overlap each other. Kind of like if you were drawing grass. Like how um, children used to draw grass or how you used to draw grass on like little um, drawings as a kid. Try and add strokes that do that rather than just going all in one direction. If you add them going in funny direction, if you add them going like this, so sort of overlapping and coming off at a slight angle every now and then, it's going to look a lot more realistic than if you have them all going in exactly the same way and line. So you want to, don't want parallel lines, you want to keep them quite loose. So be f quite loose with your wrist, quite loose with your pencil. Obviously you don't want to go completely off at the wrong angle. You want to keep them sort of going in the same direction but not all completely parallel to one another. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few more lines to the eye here because I feel like as I've added the further layers around and the colours around, I feel like this area has got a little bit too light and it doesn't have the same impact as it did have. So I'm just adding a few fur lines and everything in there. just to make the eye look as if it's just protruding a little bit more. Okay. So I think we're ready to move on to the next area. So I think the next area that I'm going to do is this side. So this small section just here. Then we're going to do the bottom section because the bottom section is full of those quite small, especially this bit, quite small spots. Um, so we're going to con concentrate on this bit because it's got those uh, just a small area of spots and then you've got that light fur and then we can do this larger cluster of quite small spots. So we're going to start off in exactly the same way going to just erase ever so lightly these graphite lines of these spots here to about there And then what we're going to do is put down our base layer of the warm grey one. So again, working in the direction that this fur is going in. So you'll notice that on this side, the fur is coming off at towards this angle. So it's going in the opposite direction to this left side. So you want to make sure that you maintain the fact that you're keeping it off towards the right hand side. So 
So you want a nice even layer across this section. And we've got a cold area. So this area up the top here is quite cold looking. So we're going to add the cold grey one over the top. I'm going to avoid those black patches though. Just add this to the areas where it's lighter. Like so, and then the buff titanium we're going to use, and we're going to add this into those warmer areas. So, all down here. Again, you want to make sure that you avoid the larger patches of dark fur. So again, with our nougat pencil, we're just going to add in the darker patches. So we're going to map those in. So we're going to start at the top here and just map this one in. so and then you're going to find where you've got those other graphite marks and then add those spots in there so remember to try and shade and blend this in to the surrounding areas as well so you take a little bit of time out of your next layers So this black mark actually needs to come around like this. And that one comes in like that. So remember to take your time with your spots.
So gently mapping everything in, remember use very light pressure to get that initial shape in. So, almost there, just a couple more spots to go. These are more of the small, sort of delicate ones. They're still important to map in though. So once you're happy with where your spots are, go back in with your dark sepia and add that darker colour over the top. Remember to blend everything out. So remember to use those lines to come down into the lighter fur and then blend upwards the opposite way into the fur as well. Just here, I'm just going to add a little patch of orange as well. So, when you see some goldeny colours, make sure that you add those in. Just glaze the colours back over the top. Then make sure that you blend everything out as well, don't forget. So around some of these fur areas, just make sure that you glaze these ochre colours and add your nougat strokes into the fur as well. It's really important to build up a realistic looking soft fur.
So make sure you've got a nice sharp pencil to be able to add these very, very tiny hairs in. So a lot of sharpening goes on when creating a colour pencil piece in this way. Now, as an alternative, if you don't actually want to burnish or blend with your colour pencils, you can use a burnisher or blender tool. If you take a look on my YouTube channel, you'll see that there are tutorials on how to do that. Or you can also use some odourless mineral spirits, so some blending solution like Zestit or Mona Lisa odourless mineral spirits. You can use Gamsol, anything that will just um, that you can apply that is solvent that you can apply in a various few ways. So with paintbrush, um, cotton bud. Any kind of thing like that, you can apply and blend that way. Obviously, if you want to get the same sort of results that I have here, then it is best to use the methods that I have. They're not strenuous on the wrist or anything. They're not very labour intensive, as this doesn't actually require that many layers in the way that I am rendering this. So it's not as if it's going to be a hard work and a hard labour for you to actually blend and burnish with your pencil. But you can use, if you would prefer, you can use odourless mineral spirits or any kind of other methods of burnishing or blending. It's up to you. If you're new to this, then obviously try some different things as well. But if you are more of a seasoned artist and you know what you like to use and you know what works best for you then use those methods. But this is my preferred way of doing things. I've always done things before I even knew about solvents or anything I always blended with my pencils because I thought that was a way that everybody did it and little did I know that there were actually people that blended with mineral spirits um, and other me various methods of blending as well. But this is the classic technique of just burnishing and blending with your pencil. So if you're having trouble distinguishing where there are some dark spots, some of them are a little bit lighter, some of them are darker, just squint at your reference picture and those darker ones will pop out at you and squint at the picture that you have drawn and see if it matches. So in the reference picture these three are the main which are popping out. You may need to go over them and adjust the depth of that black colour to get them to where you want to be. You can go over with a black pencil if you need to if you don't want to put any pressure through your paper to do that feel free to use a black pencil to really get that really nice dark rich colour. But I find it's just as good just using the dark sepia pencil. So, we're almost done with these spots, just got a few more to do. It's very quick and easy once you get into a rhythm as I said before. I really do enjoy doing this kind of work especially when it's nice and easy. So in a minute I will go through and add some fur lines to this side and add a little bit of shading where you need some of this sort of orange tone. I'm just going to finish these dark spots first.
Okay, last few spots. Okay, so all the spots are penciled in. Now we just need to go in and add a little bit of blending with a nougat pencil between these areas. So adding in these short fur lines, trying to cover every bit of the paper with this. So on this area we need to add a little bit of this continuation of this golden colour. So just going in with the light ochre yellow first. Then going in with the burnt ochre. So I'm starting to add this with shading and also just doing a few lines here and there as well. Then once we've done that, we can go in with some brown, add a few tiny, tiny specks here and there. We've got some of these darker fur lines on the very edge there. And then just going in finally with some more of the dark sepia. Just to blend everything out a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a little layer of the Delft Blue on a couple of these spots as well. For a little bit of added depth. I'm just going to pencil back over them with the Dark Sepia. Just gives them a really nice hue. Gives them a little bit of life as well. Okay. I hope you enjoyed part three of this real-time leopard eye tutorial series. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for our final part, part number four, where we will be finishing off this study. Don't forget to tag me in your works in progress photos on Instagram and Twitter, and I will be featuring some of those in some upcoming videos, and I will see you in our final part. Bye.